We're standing here at the 5th EHPA European Heat Pump Forum taking place in, in Milano in Italy and I'm talking to uh, Thomas Novak of uh, EHPA, the Secretary General. Thomas, uh, many thanks for agreeing to do the interview. Why don't you first tell us what is EHPA and why do we actually need you? Thank you, Judy. Um, the EHPA is uh, the European Heat Pump Association. As the name indicates, we represent uh, the heat pump industry from all stages of the value chain. So it starts really, membership starts with uh, test labs, with uh, research institutions, with component manufacturers, and in the end with um, uh, product manufacturers, heat pump manufacturers, but increasingly also um, utilities and institutes that look at the, the bigger complex, the building itself. You need us, I think, because uh, while there is Sunday speeches on uh, on the need for more energy efficiency and more renewable energy, we are still discussing 20% targets. We're discussing them until 2020. There is higher ambitions out there until 2050. But our analysis shows that there needs to be more support for heat pumps to get these, uh, these, this development going and to achieve the targets. So it is necessary that there is a voice that explains to uh, the policymaker uh, how a heat pump works, what the advantages are and why they should use them. So coming back to that then, Thomas, how does a heat, perk work, a heat pump work? I think the, the most difficult thing to understand is, uh, is the air source heat pump. Many people say, okay, if you have a ground source heat pump, okay, the ground, I've heard some volcanism stuff, so it's warm in there, so I can take that energy. But in fact, the ground is two degrees. How do you make it warm from two degrees? This becomes more pronounced when you talk about air, cold air, minus 10 degrees. A heat pump still works. How can you make energy from 10 degrees minus? And the, the important aspect is to underline that energy content from a human perspective is completely different than from a physical perspective. So in minus 10 degrees air, there is still energy. We can start by, let's say, 4 degrees. If you put an ice cube out at 4 degrees uh, centigrade outside temperature, it will melt. Everybody understands, I think, very well. If you want to melt something, you need energy. So you take it from the air, it works. There is other stuff, refrigerants, um, that we use that actually can take this energy transfer even below zero. And that's how a heat pump works. We employ the refrigerant to take the energy from the environment, from air, ground, water, and bring it via the compressor into the house. So now we understand what a heat pump is, and we also understand the advantages from a sort of a policy-making perspective. We can help meet those uh, renewable goals. But what about the, for the consumer? What's in it for them? Living comfort. I've heard one of our manufacturers say, and uh, the Italian association ICAR, they say they are responsible for sustainable comfort. But in fact, I think it's indeed that. We have been using a lot of technical terms to explain what a heat pump does and how good it is, how efficient it is, what it can do. But in the end, for the consumer, it brings you comfort. I have a heat pump. Personally, it's in the house. We never recognize it. It makes hot water, it makes the rooms warm, we have a floor heating, it's very comfortable. My family likes to run barefoot. Do they ask for the heating system? No. It's just there, it does the job. And I think that's what it brings. And now if we go from the, to the economics, uh, economics part, then of course it does that very efficiently. So once you have done the initial investment, you have a very cheap heating solution. Uh, it's more, more um, cost efficient than, than other uh, alternatives. And you have the good conscience of doing something right because you're using um, renewable energy. Personally, I use a green electricity tariff, so my heat pump is not producing any emissions whatsoever. Thomas, uh, quite apart from the fact that everyone loves a trip to Milan, why is it important that we're here today at the European Heat Pump Forum? <laughs> well, I, I, of course Milan is a, is a nice city, but the important thing for us uh, to go here was that we are rotating our General Assembly and conference meetings across Europe to uh, show an appreciation of certain markets. Last year we were in London, an upcoming market. This year we are in, we are in Italy in particular to um, support the fact that heat pumps do heating and cooling. We are always discussing in Brussels. Brussels requires heating and if the, all the legislation that we discuss would be done in Rome, I think the question of do we need cooling would not be an issue, but it is. And now for us, we have said we need to acknowledge that much more. We also need to learn much more because from the northern perspective, we don't necessarily understand what the energy demand of a building is if there is cooling and what the building requirements are if there is cooling needs. And the people here, of course, you would agree, understand that as a very necessary fact for their everyday comfort. And then we are back at the heat pump. The heat pump provides that heating, cooling, water at the same time in an efficient manner and these conferences apart from the program which I find is quite balanced I'm, I'm rather happy now the conference has now attracted more than 140 people 
And I think they use it on the one hand to learn more, also to learn something about Mediterranean applications, but on the other hand to network. And that's why we have provided that opportunity so that you can exchange yourself with other people, with other experts and uh, bring new ideas into the game and distribute ideas across Europe.